Hello and today we're going to talk about something slightly unusual and a bit controversial as we attended the conference here in Geneva regarding the problematic of synthetic diamonds. This conference was organized by a local association of people involved in jewelry and I learned quite a few things there which naturally led to some questions. So let's quickly summarize what the situation is and ultimately I want to ask you guys what you think about this. So to make a long story short, technology enables today to synthetically produce diamonds at a cost which makes sense to use them for many applications and gem setting is naturally one of them. The technology is pretty old. The first uh, synthetic diamonds were produced in the mid 50s and until the mid 80s this was seen more as a field of research. But in the last 10 years technology really developed itself very rapidly and the pivotal moment was reached quite recently when the price of producing these man-grown diamonds became less than with the normal extraction process. There are two main methods of producing such diamonds either with the CVD method meaning chemical vapor deposition produced in microwave uh, length uh, ovens or the HPHT method standing for high pressure, high temperature using massive presses to recreate and accelerate what nature has done in millions of years, 300 kilometers under the Earth's surface. So the point is that these uh, synthetic diamonds have the same exact properties as the natural ones and it has therefore become critical to, able to, uh, to be able to assess the provenance of all diamonds as some smart and not so well intentioned people are kind of mixing these man-made diamonds to the real ones. So one of the words I learned during this conference was the notion of melee, meaning a batch of very small uh, stones for which the risk of seeing this happen seems pretty large and today worries many players of the industry from the producers of real diamonds to dealers to the brands using them on their timepieces and ultimately the consumer. So let's listen to some of the speakers of this conference about the challenges that these uh, synthetic diamonds are putting on the table. The mechanic industry, electronic industry, they love their diamonds in order to make diamond tools. So this will grow and grow and grow. I think that we have, a, we have a quite a, an interesting opportunity and has a strong focus. But of course we would like to serve, if possible, also the jewelry market. And that's why we say here to everybody, come and visit it. Think about if you want to, more and more, in two, three, four, five, ten years, more and more, we can build machines for you and we can deliver you this wonderful uh, product, big stones, big stones, and you can use it also for the jewelry industry, so it's up to you. So, so if you are open-minded, we they can do something. If not, we will see. The worst thing that can happen is that consumers lose confidence in diamonds because they're not entirely sure that the product they're buying is what they think they're buying. And that's the number one challenge, really. Another challenge is confusion as to you know, what really a diamond is. Um, and uh, we're a diamond that uh, a diamond is a miracle of nature that was formed 300 kilometers underneath the Earth mantle billions of years ago and therefore, you know, is a um, perfect symbol of what's really authentic, genuine and meaningful in, in, in our life. Consumers should be able to buy what they want without fear of things being misrepresented. And I think what we're seeing is the synthetic diamond price is uh, falling very rapidly and the price differential between natural and synthetic diamond growing very rapidly and that will increase the incentive for dishonest people to try to sell synthetic diamonds as though it was natural diamond undisclosed and so to counteract that we have to develop very cost-effective technology which can be applied to test the stones to protect the consumer from that. So we basically adapted the instruments that are used in the chemical industry and the pharmaceutical industry. We started to use it for ourselves. So this just evolved in the past 35 years about, before they weren't really in use. So now still, we're, we're, I mean, we're trying to use everything that's, that's being in use in physics and in chemistry and in all the laboratories in the world. We're trying to apply uh, to gemstones, but we have to be non-destructive. So that's our difference. We, we work non-destructively while the others can destroy their samples very often. The good question is, would they buy synthetic diamond instead of a diamond? And what they're telling us is, when it comes to celebrating the most important moments in their lives, and the most important relationships and more meaningful relationships in their lives. Nothing replaces a diamond. 
So I think the, the story of the diamond is a natural product that comes from the earth. That's authentic, genuine and can be passed from one generation to another generation. Relates very strongly. The industry has completely changed over the past 10 to 15 years. The level of transparency, the level of regulation that the diamond sector is under is unprecedented. So overall, the production of uh, synthetic diamonds is estimated at approximately 2 million carats per year in comparison to 125 million carats that the industry produces globally. So this first number is most certainly going to continue to grow and this quite rapidly. And personally, I don't see much of an issue with this. I mean, diamonds are heavily required in the real industry for its properties, for instance, the, to create special tooling. But for a luxury usage, well, maybe you prefer to know that you have the, only the real thing set on your watch or jewel. I mean, it's a question of uh, authenticity. But at the same time, and this is fine by me, but if you are fully aware that the diamonds used on your watch are lab grown, then it becomes a question of personal choice. And this is the question I would like to ask you with this YouTube uh, polling card. So would you go for man-made diamonds if you had the choice? Meaning if things were, I mean, really clear to you? And if so, uh, what would be the reasons? A lower cost? Doesn't impact the environment? Anything else? Well, I think this is an interesting topic, despite the fact that uh, it doesn't really concern me in my many diamond set watches, but it reflects quite uh, nicely on the challenges and the impact that technology can bring to you. So all the very best. Thanks for your time. See you real soon.